Well, everybody, today's video features a restoration of these Allen Edmonds Carlisle, size nine and a half. They're pretty beat up. They look like bananas and the heels are shot. So let's see what we can do with these things. Okay, so let's go. Hello, everybody, it's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of five. My shoe collection. These are made of shell cordon. Here they are finished up. I'm not a professional. Look how tight this is, though. Very clearly here, I just cut the thread in half. And here they are, all finished up. Well, in the intro, as I said, I've got a pair of uh, Allen Edmonds Carlisles here, and they're a fairly, fairly new shoe. That logo with the uh, uh, 1922 badge, I believe was only used from 2014 until summer of 2018. And uh, there's no date code on this era of shoes, but they are between 2014 to 2018. Uh, it's kind of an interesting shoot. It's not really a whole cut. It is an Oxford closed lacing system, but you can see it's got, you know, the seam here. So, you know, I guess it's made from three pieces of leather, you know, this quarter, uh, this quarter, and uh, the toe and the vamp. Uh, kind of interesting shoe. Um, they're pretty, the leather condition is good, which is what I always look for when thrifting a pair of shoes. Oh, by the way, I found these, you know, people, there's no secret from, you know, if you, yes, of course, it makes a difference. I know some areas, there's just not going to be stuff, uh, but I do travel a bit, um, you know, for my work, so I generally don't go out thrifting, I thrift while I'm out, and these I actually paid uh, $17.50, and they were in a place called the Value World, okay, um, but this is interesting. This toes, yeah, you know, scuffed, but look at this one, just to compare them. Like, what are they doing? You know, kicking soccer balls or, you know, something with them. Um, the soles are not terrible. Actually, for paying that much for a pair of used shoes, you see there's wear on the tips of the toes of this would be the right shoe. More than I would like to see. And you can see uh, worn into the stitches on the left side of the right shoe, the inside of the right shoe, the outside of the left shoe. So I wonder if uh, this person has some unevenness in their gait. You know, I think this is called supination, where you wear on the outside and the inside. I think that's pronation, like a fallen arch. I don't know. Um, and then we see on the heels, uh, I think I can fix this, but this heel, I think, is not worn into the heel base. It's not the black rubber on Allen Edmonds. There's two layers of rubber, okay, on Allen Edmonds. You see, and it's just, uh, just starting to wear into the the layer of rubber that you don't want to wear into. This one, I think, this one I think is okay. You can see the line there. So, but anyway, uh, I think I'm gonna have to put some heels on them. I'm toying with the concept of uh, maybe doing some patina on them. Um, nothing crazy, nothing fancy, no color change. But so let me turn the camera around here and uh, get started on these things. I'm gonna show you a little more. Heels, see right there. See what I mean by the two layers of rubber? Rubber, you don't want to lay wear into that upper layer of rubber. This layer of rubber is just glued on. That upper layer is nailed through the fiberboard heel. Soles, um, yeah, it's not terrible. I think there's about half of the life still left in them. That's what I mean by that 1922 badge logo. So you know, see here, that's really badly scuffed, but nothing torn, no cracks, no rips. The leather's still in good condition. Um, just looks like somebody put these shoes on every day or, you know, every other day and wore the crap out of them and didn't really take care of them or polish them. There's a little bit of something going on there. I'll have to check that out. A little bit of damage there, but I don't think that's severe. Right. So, well, first things first. Um, and by the way, these are, just in case you're wondering, uh, size nine and a half, model number 8832. That is the, if you can see there, oh, that's the Carlisle. Okay. First things first, uh, uh, take the shoelaces out and uh, get some shoe trees in them. Generally, when I'm working on shoes like this, I like to shoes, use shoe trees that are really tight fitting. That's nice and true. Uh, shoe trees have sizes, by the way. Like, for example, uh, this, it's hard to read, made in US. This one is large. That says made in USA, and then right right there it says large right. okay. and 
see how much tension I've got on it. That should help straighten, straighten the shoe out over time. So you see how much spring, that's about right. That'll help straighten it out. And then especially while you're working on them, see, look how much better that looks just, you know, by inserting those. But as you're polishing and putting things on the leather, kind of wetting the leather down a little bit, that'll help, uh, you know, that will help when the leather's wet and you're stretching it. Okay. And uh, get the laces up. I think I'm going to go ahead and work on the heels first. Of course, I don't want to do a lot to the uppers until I know that the shoe is structurally okay. By the way, in case you're wondering what I do, see, this is now horizontal, flat, and level. And it's the other way, it's tilted up. Since I'm going to work on the heels, I want it flat and level. All right. Okay. This is really just a putty knife. It's, it's not sharp. It's sharpened, but it's not sharp. And since it's already peeling up here, you know what, there's some stuff on there. See, this one's pretty thin. So we're good on both heel bases. Neither one has been touched. Uh, generally what I do is I take it out to the garage with 120 grit sandpaper on the belt sander and just, psh, just try and get that excess glue off. I'll be back. And this is what they look like after just hitting with the belt sander very lightly. Just wanted, like I said, take the extra glue off of there. Now when I'm replacing top lifts, it's important that you get something that's similar thickness. This is a little bit thinner, but this is worn. Um, quarter inch is too thick. Let me show you here briefly. Like when you get, um, I know it doesn't seem like much. Good your neolite, these work as well. But you don't want to get something quarter inch thick. You want to get something a little bit thinner. So I just basically kind of trace them out. Now for gluing them on, what I'm using is Master. This is Petronial Master All-Purpose Cement. I get it from Nord Shoe, N-O-R-D-S-H-O-S-H-O-E, Nord Shoe. That is the name of the eBay seller. He's out of, uh, I think, Cleveland, Ohio. Anyway. I used to get it in the bigger cans. Uh, problem I found is with the big cans and a home use, it dries out at the bottom of the can before I can use it up. Apply it to both surfaces and then let it set up before putting them together. set up, I'll do the other shoe.
Now I'm out here in the garage with my ear protection on, even though it's 46 degrees, I'm gonna sand down this edge here with the belt sander. So I've talked about this in other videos. I'll kind of uh, talk you, walk you through what I'm doing here. So obviously belt sander, there's a couple nails on the bench holding the belt sander down. And you'll see there is that roller, uh, you know, over which the uh, sandpaper, uh, you know, is driven by. Uh, that part there is much more difficult to use because the shoe will want to kind of skip away from you or get pulled. There's that span, do you see, between the roller and the flat metal plate on the belt sander. Um, I use this area because you get a more accurate uh, finish, even though it is more difficult to use because you have a line contact, a circular thing contacting a circular thing. So the heels are done. Oh, look at that. God, let me hammer that down a little bit. I don't know how that happened. Now I need to trim the front edge of this. I'm going to do that manually with a Dremel. Sanding the front edge with the Dremel here, you'll see a uh, trim the other heel with a knife first. Uh, but what I could have done better was put a piece of tape on the leather sole to protect it from the end of the Dremel. It's a little messy, but it gets the job done. I'm gonna finish the edge of the heels a little bit better. This is a uh, 400 grit sandpaper. And I'm going to work on these heels in a little bit here. Uh, point is just to get them really nice and glassy smooth. Not glamorous. Not fun. It makes them beautiful. This will get them so they're smoother than the Allen Edmonds factory. By the way, I didn't say this, but on the belt sander, um, I actually used 120 grit to finish the heels. Uh, I also have a rougher, I believe it's like a 36 grit that really chews through material fast, but because I trimmed the rubber heels very close, I didn't need it. On the belt sander, I'm just going right to the 400. Now that I know that the heels are going to come out nicely, uh, I'm gonna switch to the uppers. Now, if you notice, obviously this toe is much more scuffed, but it seems like this area is just lighter in general than this one, so I know exactly what I'm going to use to strip these. Uh, this stuff smells awful and it's pretty expensive, but it works well. Saphir Reno Mat. Um, this is a, a solvent. Uh, it's good for cleaning uppers. It'll remove all the wax. It, it, from what I've seen, a lot of the shoes, Allen Edmund shoes, seem to have like a base color, like the, the, the leather is dyed, and then a surface, co uh, not coating, a surface color is sprayed on. Um, it will often take that surface color off. So I'm not really trying to strip the shoes all the way, but just, you know, get them down to the, the base layer of the leather and get them both the same color. And then I can reapply some, reapply some color if I want to. Nice old cotton t-shirt, like triple it up. This stuff separates. I don't know if you saw me shake it earlier. Bottle shape is, is very top heavy too. I don't know if they've changed it, but. Whew. God, this stuff smells terrible. I'm pressing about as hard as I can, by the way. See that bottle teeter? I hate that. There's really not much. I mean, granted, it's hard to tell this rag is dirty. There's not a whole lot coming off. Okay, that, that really didn't do much. There's still a little bit different color this one's still a little bit I don't know if you can tell on camera this one's still a little bit lighter than that one maybe it evened up a little bit it's still splotchy I could probably fill that in with cream polish but uh, I think I'm gonna get aggressive Let's see what 
acetone does. This is not a treatment. I'm stripping color off. This is very bad for the leather. You only do it once in the shoe's lifetime, really, is the way I look at this. stripped and I think I'm gonna dye them I'm just gonna I don't have an exact plan for how I'm gonna dye them I'm just gonna see where the airbrush takes me let's go to the garage so we've got a actually I'm not joking a beautiful uh, Ohio February day it's about 50 degrees 48 degrees something like that in February which is pretty rare for us uh, often have snow so this is a great day to do stuff out here in the garage so here I am ready to airbrush shoes blank canvas uh got the airbrushing materials the you know the tool compressor mask well ventilated ventilated garage and most importantly this is what happens just from moving the bottles right the stuff the only thing worse than leather dye is like glitter for as far as getting on everything so some gloves are really important um and i know i'm obviously going to use these character lines i'm going to darken around the top i'm just going to see where the airbrush takes me you know um, all right, so let me get this set up and let's go.
shoes look now after dying. Now, Saphir. Uh, Medal Dior. I like to use pure polish a lot, but I generally use this. Um, a, I want to use it up. But B, that way, if I get you know kind of some dye contaminant in it, you know, it's not going to hurt my other good shoes. So. No, nothing wrong. This is what a lot of people say is the best, but I prefer pure polish, cleaner conditioner for regular conditioning. But I always want to condition them after you dye them, and you'll see some of the dye come back up too as well. drawing I'm gonna go ahead and color the edges of the soles here I'm just gonna use this uh, uh, this is actually medium brown saphir cream polish the uppers I'm going to start with some of the medium brown same thing I use in the soles I think for the tips of the toes some of the darker areas and then I will use the light brown I think this is called light brown number three light brown for the for the rest okay you can talk
you guys think? Like the color graduation, burnishing. Can you tell it's a little darker here? They're definitely not perfect. They're a heck of a lot better than when I got them. Heels look pretty good, don't they? You can see right there, spot. A little undulation right there. And right there, a little divot. And there's a dark spot. I don't know how I got it on the inside of the right shoe. Oh well. Tried to mask it, but it didn't really work. And actually, that spot where I dripped the uh, dye, I'm quite amazed that didn't affect it at all. The heels. Fresh heels. Ready for a whole bunch more wear. Thank you guys so much for watching and if you've ever gotten one of your friends or coworkers to buy a pair of Allen Edmonds shoes and you're proud of that, you may want to consider subscribing to my channel. Remember I've been releasing videos uh, not uh, absolutely every Friday but when they do come out they come out Fridays at 5 p.m. Uh, so check back because since about October or so of 2022 I've been releasing about a video every single week. Okay thank you very much and God bless you guys. Take care. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, go to my YouTube page, Robert Powers, and then click on Playlists.